Hey, good morning. And it's quite early out here, Monday morning. And uh, I, I did a lot of work yesterday, but I had a terrible industrial accident with the, techno with the newer technology. I was taking the chip out of the GoPro camera uh, to load into the computer. And there's a little, that they snap in there and it slipped away and it fell. <laughs> it fell into a mason jar full of oil. <laughs> a little computer. <laughs> so yesterday's videos are uh, oiled up and never to be seen again. But anyway, I'll be uh, more careful. I, I was asked about, uh, you know, my thoughts on lathes in general. And uh, back in the days, you know, it, it, it's just a lot different than I remember back in the 70s, I went into a machine shop called Freeborn Tool in Spokane, and maybe some of you in the area remember that. And what was impressive about it was they had like six or eight bridge ports up front. And they had six or eight guys making parts on those bridge ports. And uh, each, <laughs> now, uh, uh, you know, there's fewer men per <laughs> for machines. You know, it's not like, the, like it used to be. Well, anyway, what made a lathe good um, back then, and, um, oh, there was uh, a, a, another person that used to uh, get on the internet and talk about lathes, and that was Carla, lived in uh, California, and she knew a lot about lathes and uh, ran lathes, uh, like, I, like I have and stuff. And um, what makes a lathe pretty desirable is ease of operation. And uh, what I'm standing at here, I think, is probably the slickest machine ever devised in ease of operation. And uh, it's Monarch 10 E. And they made larger lathes uh, in the same pattern with the controls and everything. And uh, it, it's, you can really be productive on these. And uh, just they're just so slick, and every everything uh, moves easy. Well, one of the problems um, that kind of come, <laughs> is they have small spindle bores, and <clears throat> usually they're under two inches, like inch and five eighths, even uh, inch and a half and stuff. Um, which is just big enough for 5C collets. But uh, lathes came along, like uh, I mentioned, the Hercules Ajax, uh, the Mazak Her uh, Hercules Ajax. And they were really kind of crude, in my opinion. Um, they didn't have clutches. Um, some of them um, had A-type spindles. And where, where it's hard to change the chucks, but a lot of shops like that because those things are real rigid. And uh, in this, uh, I don't know, part of the country, uh, machines uh, and uh, regular workshops just get the crap beat out of them and you're overloading them and stuff like that. And uh, I've used uh, that type of lathe, I've used the uh, Hercules Ajax and uh, some of the, uh, one of the early jets, um, I used uh, a Cadillac and uh, Webb and, um, and for a short time I got to use a Morisiki, which is uh, kind of, uh, kind of the best of all of them and, and slick as, but they, they don't have a lot of spindle speeds and uh, the gears in them are really kind of small like compared to axle sims and, and some of the um, machines like that, but they're strong enough. It's sort of like uh, that design you can really be productive on and the machine's strong enough that uh, they hold together good. So those became really popular, you know, just because of the, um, 
um, ease of operation and stuff like that. Um, you know, as far as change in speeds on the smaller 10 E, it's all just with a knob, you know, and <laughs> two ranges. Now, take this one. Let, us let me get the camera loose here. I don't have a swivel on it. Now, this is at the opposite end of the spectrum is uh, this machine here. Uh, it's just super heavy duty. And it's like it's, it's hard to move the tailstock, you know. Uh, <laughs> this tailstock is just absolutely uh, huge. But machines like this were... Uh, you know, just for taking monster cuts and heavy duty um, work. But you take this machine and compare it to like, um, oh, the Series 60 and 61 Monarchs, which look like the 10 E, but just uh, larger. At the end of the day, that's what Carla would say, you would feel beat up. <laughs> he was in this all day. Because <laughs> it's, you know, uh, I don't want to detract from the coolness of these machines, but uh, you take something like uh, <laughs> like a Mori Siki of the same, uh, same size. At the end of the day, you're going to have a lot more work done on the Mori Siki, and you're going <laughs> to not be so worn out. Um, I got this um, the six jaw mounted on here, and, and it's working out good. Uh, I still need to. Uh, I'm going to do that right uh, after uh, this video. I do this video. Is uh, it just looks still a little iffy there, so I'm going to snug up on that um, rear spindle bearing again, just a little bit. You know. Tighten it up, mark it, like I did in that one video uh, back, uh, adjusting uh, the bearing. Well, anyway, I got that tiny chuck on there. And now this is the chuck that uh, came with the machine. And it's a steel, about 12 and a half inch, um, three-jaw, bison three-jaw, with a four-inch hole in it. And it's just monstrous. And I think with the backing plate, it must weigh 140 pounds. It's heavier than the, than, um, the Cushman 4 jaw. So I took the back plate. What I found with that chuck, mm, a little drink of coffee there. What I found with that chuck, you see me check these back plates for slop. Well, that chuck had a whole bunch of slop, and it had a bunch of run out. So I took the slop out of the back plate. Uh, what did I do that one on? I machined, um, the taper was okay, and I machined uh, the back of it on the old brown and sharp there, using the wall hopter head um, to uh, refit the back plate. Now I got to put that back plate back on here and of course machine the flange and uh, fit that chuck to it. Then I can check the, uh, the run out on that. And uh, then I got to grind the jars on this chuck and uh, the other one. So that stuff, <laughs> that stuff's coming up. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, the... Uh, the best, uh, the best machines uh, that uh, kind of turned up uh, over the years that I've seen are the Morisiki style. Now, the old guy goes here, well, they're all a copy of the Mazak, all a copy of the Hercules Ajax. Well, they kind of, I don't know. They kind of are, I guess. I don't know. But the controls and stuff on the... Um, uh, Morisiki type, and I'm thinking of the web and um, Cadillac too. Um, they're large. They're larger machines, and um, I'm trying to think of the best one that I've run. It was probably a web. Uh, I think it's about 19 or 
20 inch uh, by 60. And boy, that's a hunk of machinery, Morisiki type, you know. Um, the Morisiki that I ran was a smaller one, but those are um, really, really nice. And I think uh, the watch on uh, might, might have been uh, the one I ran, uh, Webb, watch on. I, I'm not sure. Then there's Yam, and, and a, a shop not far from here has one uh, branded Yam, and it's the Morisiki type, and it's, it's really a good machine, too. So, I don't know. That style uh, lends itself to uh, good pro productivity. That's why they're so desirable. Now, the other machines that were pretty good, and they're, you know, less, less expensive, it's like the Victor um, and the, um, and some of the Jet models. Now, on, on those other models like that, the machines don't, don't get very good until they have at least seven and a half or ten horsepower, and, uh, you, you know, like a, a uh, a 14 by 40 lathe is just ridiculously wimpy <laughs> in comparison to this axle center. That's kind of another story there. Uh, but it seems like, you know, the jets and stuff like that don't get good until they get uh, in, in, in the larger, larger sizes. Um, so that's just kind of it. Maybe 5,000 pounds or something like that. You know, 10 horsepower and 5,000 pounds, so you got a more substantial machine. But it's all with the controls, easy use, and durability, too. Um, now, the Morisiki, uh, at least the smaller ones, um, have ball bearing spindles, so they have a bit higher accuracy of rotation. And that might be important for, you know, if you're doing some hydraulics type stuff or some, you know, making spindles or, you know, things like that. You get a little better, uh, <laughs> might not have to do second operations like grinding. So, I don't know. I guess that's my thoughts. Uh, but uh, being old and retired, I, I find, uh, like, the Axelson here just a lot of fun. You know, I don't have to be real productive or anything. And I just get a kick out of that. <laughs> the sheer mass of this machine. I could show you something real quick that's pretty funny. Now, you see, see the, it's got an open gearbox here. You see the distance between these holes? That's how wide the cone gears are in there. <laughs> Look at the distance on an American pacemaker. <laughs> it's, they got narrow little gears in there. But they're strong enough, they don't break. You know, it's just like this machine, they, they just went crazy <laughs> over built this thing. <laughs> so, anyway, I hope you enjoy watching this. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, with this crazy KDK tool post too. And uh, I will be moving it around less when I, uh, um, I, I got this uh, triangular insert uh, tool holder because I got a bunch of surpl surplus triangular inserts. And what I do is I grind these things, grind that ear off there. And then I can tilt it a little bit in there and do facing and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of some of the little things I'm doing here. And uh, uh, I'll get busy with things and uh, be back. Okay, you guys have a great morning.